Well, hello everybody. Once again, it's another episode of the Typewriter video series. Hey, this is Joe Van Cleve, and look what I got here. This is a Smith Corona Electric. It's a Super 5 Series model with electricity. Stay tuned. Well, I've seen these uh, bluish green turquoise-ish colored Super 5 style Smith Coronas around, and I have two of the 5 series and mine are gray and brown and gray or brown and green kind of more drab colors but I've seen the blue ones and I really thought they were pretty cool and then last month in April of 2017 at the first ever Albuquerque type in somebody brought one of these the Smith Corona Electric this is an electrified Smith Corona 5 series with a beautiful red electric logo and the electric power switch doom turns on red there isn't that cool anyways they brought it to the type in and i absolutely loved it i thought it was a cool machine and i thought man if i could ever find one of those that would be so neat well today monday i went down to the thrift stores on central avenue in albuquerque and look what i found but first, before I get into it, I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update on my grandson, Noah, who you may be aware has been in the hospital after a serious car crash and he suffered burns. He's undergone two operations for skin grafts and they've taken quite well. Um, there may be one slight area they may have to go in and do something else, but other than that, it's looking pretty good and he may be released from the hospital sometime this week. So I wanted to just thank everybody for their thoughts, prayers, and their kind words you've sent my way. And I've made sure that Noah has, has knows that everybody is thinking and praying about him. And also, <laughs> one of his teachers from his high school came down today and brought an enormous poster size card with a bunch of student signatures. and. Um, when the teachers were telling the students about Noah's uh, accident, uh, a lot of the students were like, Noah, which Noah is that? And they go, Nike Noah. Oh, Nike Noah. My grandson likes Nike and, Air, and Michael Jordan and Air Jordan, and so he's known as Nike Noah around his high school. Anyways, so Nike Noah is doing quite well. He is recovering. It's going to be, you know, there'll be some physical therapy and all that stuff going on. Uh, but we're going to give him as much support as he needs. So with that, thank you very much for your thoughts and prayers. Let's get into this Smith Corona Electric. So I got out today early uh, before 10 o'clock and um, the antique stores and thrift stores don't open till about 10 usually. So I had breakfast and I kind of wandered around uh, that part of Albuquerque, Central Avenue, Knob Hill, took some photos and finally I got into this antique store at five minutes till 10. They let me through the door. I wandered through there and wow, there it was sitting here. And you know what? I realized when I saw it sitting there, I realized, you know what? I've seen this machine at the same antique store maybe a couple months ago. And I, I don't know what it was, but it didn't trigger on me what it was. I just thought it was just another five series. I guess I didn't think of it as being electric or anything. And it was rather dirty. So... But today, after having seen one at the type in the same exact model and color, I thought, oh my gosh. And they were asking a pretty decent price for it. And everything is functional on the machine. I haven't seen any problem other than that caused by, uh, you know, hardened grease and dirt and everything. So the condition of this machine was, if you tip up the machine and look at the bottom, it was pretty clean. But on top... It was just covered in eraser shavings and the little white flecks from the erasing tabs. You know, those little plastic sheets with a white coating on it. It was all over this machine. And it took me quite a while to clean it out. I took all the body panels off. Uh, so it's the ribbon cover comes off. There's two screws for, on each hinge. The, this whole U-shaped side frame, the sides in the front, all comes out with a bunch of screws on the bottom. There's the back plate down on the bottom and the back here comes out. And then there are two little plates in the front behind the keyboard that come out. One down here actually. 
Anyways, once you get all those out, pretty much all the, the painted stuff is gone except these panels covering the carriage. And I didn't want to take those off because they're a little bit more involved. But once I took all the main panels off, I was able to uh, gingerly blow out most of the crumbs and dust and whatnot with an air compressor. And I always, I'm always real careful when I'm doing the blowout that not to use full pressure. I don't want to dislodge a spring. Um, one end of the right ribbon spool auto reverse spring came loose, and, but I, I reconnected it. Uh, and then I had to go through with just the usual brushing and cotton bud swabs and all this stuff and trying to get all the grunge out. And I used a combination of alcohol Mascara brushes, cotton swabs, a uh, paintbrush, and some naphtha lighter fluid, and cleaned it up pretty good. And then the final thing was the paintwork. This is a crinkle kind of a textured finish, and I wasn't sure what to do, so I just took some uh, Windex and an old toothbrush, and I would just do one quadrant of the body and then quickly wipe it up with an absorbent towels before it dried and I did that all over and it cleaned up really nicely but then I decided well there's still a little bit of a grunginess to it and so I got some armor all some spray armor all on a on a textured like a terry cloth kind of a rag and very I tested it in the back here and I very carefully sprayed it on the rag and then did some more wiping and that actually went a long ways beyond what the alcohol, what the uh, Windex did to clean up uh, the paint job. And I didn't get any uh, color of the paint transferring to my rag. So I thought it was pretty safe for the paint job. Now this is a five series or super five series Smith Corona from the 1950s. And like all the other five series, it has essentially the same features with a few differences. Um, first of all, when you are cleaning and degreasing the tight bar linkages, um, you can't just press a key and manually flip up a tight bar and, and work the linkage because that linkage mechanism is driven by kind of a cam system or whatever down there. So without the power being turned on, you're not going to be able to manually operate those tight bars when you're cleaning them. Um, and if you take off the, if you open up the ribbon cover, there is an interlock switch that interrupts the power. So if I turn on the power, I turned on the power switch, but there's nothing happening until you make that switch. So you have to know to safely do this with the covers off, the belts are all on the left side here, the drive belts, and you don't want to uh, have anything loose or close to that to snag the belts. and be aware of, I don't think there's any real open electrical connections on these. I think they're all pretty much covered. So electrical safety wise, you're pretty good, but just being aware mechanically, there's always something running in there when you, when you turn it on. But in order then to uh, degrease these linkages where the tight bars are, I really had, I couldn't use my usual method of, you know, doing alcohol with a, uh, a mascara brush and working the linkage by hand and going through with a little bit of naphtha. So I had to basically do it all, do them all blind, if you will, and then turn on the power and then test them all and seeing which ones were hanging up and then go back and redo them a little bit over and over again until they quit hanging up. So that's one of the differences between the electric and the manual. Um, it does have the full manual carriage. So you have a standard carriage, on, like on any Super 5 Smith Corona with your standard carriage release levers, your carriage return line feed lever, and the escapement mechanism down underneath looks essentially very much the same as any other manual uh, Super 5 typewriter. Um, the space bar, of course, doesn't operate manually without electricity, but what's interesting about the space bar is it's a power space bar, and the only other key on here that has a repeat function is the dash key, the dash and underline. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the ribbon that was on this was an old dry ribbon. Uh, it, it made a faint imprint, enough for me to test the machine and know that it worked. But once I cleaned this thing up and put it back together, I put on a blue, a fresh blue ribbon. I had bought some of these blue ribbons on off a seller on Amazon, and 
I have a nice blue ribbon, blue ink to go with the blue color of the typewriter, which I think is very cool. So let's uh, do some, some test typing here. This machine makes a very nice dark imprint. It is a 12 character per inch elite font. And uh, I just think it's great. I did have to make an adjustment to the uppercase letters. They were printing a little bit, if I remember, I don't remember high or low, but anyway, they weren't quite matching the lowercase numbers. And I noticed that on this particular machine, the adjustment for upper and lowercase is in a slightly different position than it would be on a manual Series 5 machine. So on a manual Series 5 machine, the adjustment for upper, there's a separate adjustment on both left and right side for your uppercase, and, and the one on the left is, is behind here, underneath the ribbon spool, at kind of at an angle, matching the angle of this crescent segment and the same thing on the right side but on this particular electric machine the adjustment is right here in the center underneath it and it's there's a set screw and a nut locking that here and one here so the upper and lower positions for the upper and lower case are set by these positions of these two set screws. So they're very easy to get to. It's just uh, above or just in front of the escapement mechanism. So there are a few differences other than that. For instance, you might notice the bell down here. This bell is bigger and it's situated horizontal relative to the machine itself. Whereas on a 5 series manual, if I'm not mistaken, the bell is sitting vertically behind here near the back of the machine. This has a clapper arm here. It's, a, it's on a spring-loaded arm here, and it strikes the top of the bell like that. So I think it has a little bit louder chime to it. And then, of course, there's this uh, plastic kind of a pulley mechanism that's part of the drive mechanism for the electric. And you can see, of course, the motor is right here on the lower left, and all the drive belts are on the right, on the, the left side of the machine. And of course, as I indicated earlier, the uh, touch adjustment is up here underneath the front of the machine, slightly to the right of center. And there are some numbers engraved on the plate here that says one through four. And it takes multiple turns of this wheel to move it from one to four direction. So that's kind of the hardness of the feel of the keyboard, whereas that selector knob on the front uh, next to the power switch is the hardness of the imprint itself. And this is similar to the later Galaxy series electric coronets. They had a similar kind of an adjustment for the touch uh, that was separate from the hardness of the typing or the hardness of the imprint. So as far as the rest of the features of the typewriter, they're essentially the same as any uh, 5 Series Super uh, 5 Series typewriter of this era. Um, the, there is the manual ribbon reversing lever here. You have your color ribbon color selector here, and you have your tab set and clear and your, here and your tab switch here, so it's very much like a silent super in that regard. Not quite as silent because it does have the motor uh, sound, and you may not be, be able to see it because of the paper, but it has the same kind of uh, bipole -ish, you know, rabbit ear <laughs> TV antenna style paper support in the back, and the same uh, ribbon, very similar, uh, not ribbon, but uh, margin um, adjustments. Let me pull the paper out. Same kind of margin adjustments, push and slide. And it has three positions for the uh, line spacing, one, two, and three. And it has the end of page feature on the left side of the platen. And it has the two different methods for uh, disabling the line ratcheting spacing. You have the pull out one here on the left knob, which, and then you have the little lever here on the front that, that will temporarily disable it. 
or actually one of these uh, permanently changes the spacing, one temporarily does. Anyways, I forget which one. It has the same standard um, carriage release levers on both knobs, behind both knobs, uh, and the same removable platen system where you flip up the paper bale, flip back this, uh, pull out this, and flip this lever here, and this front, uh, this right side of the platen pulls out, and you can remove the platen for cleaning, which came in very handy today because I was indeed cleaning it. There are some keyboard differences worth pointing out on this uh, electrified uh, Series 5 machine that makes it different from the earlier Series 5 machines of the 1950s. And it's kind of, you can see the hybrid a transition to the 1960s keyboards in this design. First of all, you do have a number one and an exclamation mark. And then you have the plus and equals. And most notably, though, I think in terms of usefulness, is the uh, apostrophe is lowercase. And it's right down here on the middle home row uh, with the uh, shifted quote mark. And this is super important because when you're writing dialogue or some kind of writing that uses a lot of contractions, instead of having to shift to get the apostrophe above the 8 like in the older machines, man, your apostrophe is right there and it's just like typing with a, with a modern electric typewriter in that sense. I really don't understand why typewriter makers, manufacturers didn't put a lowercase apostrophe a lot earlier than they did, but it sure makes writing a lot faster, especially when you're writing dialogue and such where a lot of people are using contractions. But other than that, it's a standard US style keyboard. Now as far as the color scheme goes, what can you say? That turquoise green with the bright red uh, electric logo, the red power in, uh, indicator, power on uh, part of the switch, and then these cream colored keys and the cream colored knobs, uh, platen knobs, and the cream colored paper table back here with the paper scale. Uh, what a wonderful color scheme, right? Um, the only other typewriter, uh, uh, Smith Corona 5 series, in this color that I've ever seen in Albuquerque in all the t years that I've been, you know, looking for typewriters was a manual and it had someone's social security number scratched across the front <laughs> of the ribbon cover. I almost bought it. I'm glad I didn't. But this one is a keeper for sure. And so if you guys are fortunate enough to find one of these out in the wild, I would grab it. Now, there's one thing I was going to mention uh, before we go, before we close here, is the, the drive belts. Now, back in the old days of the 1980s, 1990s, and up into the early aughts, um, there were companies that sold rubber drive belts. I know PRB, Projector Recorder Belt Company, was one of them because I was a, a VCR technician and I had to buy rubber belts. Um, I don't know if there's any companies left that replace that sell rubber belts like that. And I don't know if there's any replacement parts like aftermarket parts for these belts. The belts are slightly worn. They're not really cracked totally, but they look like they're made a little a much more substantial quality than the belts that I used to see in VCRs. They are rubber, but two of the sides have kind of a harder texture to it. If you, if you guys have seen the drive belts that drive uh, uh, evaporative coolers. They have kind of a textured material in the rubber and that's what these have. So they look like they've lasted quite a while. I, I'm assuming they've, they're the original belts and I just hope they don't break. And before I close I should mention that <clears throat> this typewriter comes in the brown hard shell, what is it called, holiday case? Uh, kind of rounded corners and and pinch it to open it. It has the original key in it for the lock. I did not clean the case, so the case is kind of dirty. But in case you're not familiar with these holiday cases, the back lid is removable, and then there is a bracket here that holds the typewriter, but there is a lever here that you can flip down and remove this T-shaped bracket entirely, and then you can use this case for something else. 
besides typewriters like going on holiday and you can put your gin and tonic kit in here or whatever martini kit uh, it also came <laughs> with uh, this pack of Eaton Allen correct type uh, <laughs> uh, correction strips which is probably partly responsible for all the grunge in the typewriter and there's a couple of these strips uh, still in here and one of them says if you do someone was correcting and they were erasing if you do <laughs> but this is a um, it he this plastic holder is a it's the holder for the correct type and it's it is, it's adhesive there's an adhesive backing on it it was actually stuck to the the back of the machine I think or maybe the bottom of the case I can't remember which one but anyway they have this adhesive plastic holder for holding your correction strips that came with it so anyways pretty cool huh so this is the second electrified manual typewriter in my collection the first one I got was the Smith Corona Coronet Automatic 12, which is like a Galaxy 12. So it's the later generation, I guess the 6 series, if you call it that, uh, from the 1960s. But um, certainly between the two, uh, I think this thing, if I had to choose and only have one electric machine, boy, this thing is it, huh? I like the more compact size. I don't really like the 12-inch carriages on those the Galaxy series typewriters, only because... I don't have any need for 12 inch wide paper typing on that kind of paper so the machines are a little too bulky for me for my taste and I really do think I like the um, 1950s rounded curves of this uh, of this uh, Super 5 series uh, you know it's interesting how industrial design in the mid 20th century followed all the trends of, of fashion and design how the typewriters look like the automobiles. Doesn't this thing look like a Chevy Bel Air or something? Something you would expect Fred Mertz on I Love Lucy to be driving. <laughs> and then when you get to the Galaxy series of the 1960s, you know, the Galaxy really does look a, like a Ford Galaxy 500 or the big straight lines and angular corners and everything. It's very interesting, but I do like the look of this for sure. And uh, if I only had to have one electrified manual typewriter, this would certainly be it. But uh, anyway, this is Joe Van Cleve, and I'm just super excited about getting a Smith Corona Electric in this color scheme. And until next time, happy typing, keep writing, and you guys have yourselves a great day.